Hello everyone, my name is Matiz and I will be showing you everything that needs to be known about the Velocity Squared water block. We will begin with a step-by-step -step installation of the water block. Video is timestamped, so you can skip right away to the part that interests you the most. Also, do not forget to contact our renowned customer support anytime you need it or have a question. Now let's dive right in. First, find the instruction manual and compare the content. You can find the QR code at the bottom of the package. Now let's open this bad boy and compare the content. Before you install the block to the motherboard, make sure you've got all the needed tools for the installation. You'll need some thermal grease, an enclosed 2.5mm Allen key, or better yet, an EK Torx screwdriver, which will allow for a risk-free installation because you won't be able to over-tighten the screws on your block. You can find one in our web shop or through the link below. First, we're gonna be using the LGA1700 motherboard. We'll be using this Velocity Squared water block that uses a cooling engine that's made specifically for the LGA1700 socket, which this motherboard uses. When you're preparing your motherboard, make sure you're working on a clean surface such as this one. Coming soon. Before installing the thermal grease, make sure that the CPU IHS is clean. Don't forget to remove the protective foil from the cold plate. Next, we should put on some thermal grease. Before placing the water block onto the motherboard, make sure that the whole IHS is covered with thermal grease. Just a friendly tip, always think ahead where you want to route the DRGB cable, so you don't need to remount the block. Now let's align these holes, we're routing this over here. Press the water block against the motherboard and turn it around. Keep holding the water block in place. Alternatively, you can place it on an elevated surface, but in that case you'll need to push down on the motherboard itself. You may do so like this. Next, press down the back plate. First make sure all the holes are aligned and then start screwing in the screws in a cross pattern. The reason we recommend using this torque screwdriver is because you can hear an audible click when you've reached the specified torque, which is 0.6 Nm. Just like that. Make sure to orient the backplate as illustrated in the installation manual. Incorrect installation of the backplate may result in damage to the motherboard. And there you have it. The water block is installed, now all that's left to do is peel off this protective foil and install the fittings. After you've done so, make sure to use the EK Leak Tester, you can find it in our web shop or in the link in the description below. Plug the 3-pin connector from the water block's DRGB LED light to the DRGB header on the motherboard. Do not plug it into the 4-pin RGB header, as you will fry the LEDs. Please ensure that the arrow indicated on the connector is plugged into the 5V line as indicated on your motherboard. It's recommended to mount the water block onto the motherboard before putting the motherboard into the case. However, if your case has a big enough cutout zone, like here, that you can access at least with an Allen key, you can also mount the motherboard first and then put on the water block, like this. As you can see, you can access all of these four screws from the back. So in regards to possible block orientation, you can rotate the velocity squared for Intel for both LGA1700 and LGA1200 in any way you'd like. So you can rotate it by 90 degrees or 180 270 even. AMD block on the other hand doesn't have a square mounting hole layout, so you can only rotate it by 180 degrees. If you rotate the block into any direction, you may experience a really really minor performance hit, but nothing to be concerned about. So no matter how you decide to rotate the block, always make sure to use the correct inlet and outlet ports as per our installation manual. 
I'll show you how to change the LED strip on the Velocity Squared water blocks. To replace this LED strip, all you need is the 2mm Allen key that came with the block. We've simplified the process of replacing the LED strip. All you need to do is remove these two screws that are located next to the cable to remove the standout. With the Velocity Squared blocks, we've made improvements, so you no longer have to disassemble the whole block to replace an LED strip. You just take out the standout and that's it. As seen from the top-down view, the DRGB cable goes through the block into this channel right here and the LED strip itself starts right here at the edge of the standout. Beware that the LED strip is glued in place with a double-sided tape, so it's just a tad sticky. Carefully remove it, then pick a replacement LED strip and make sure it works beforehand. And then just route it back through the block and then through the standout. And once we've got the edge of the LED strip itself through the standout, make sure you've removed the double-sided tape from the inner side of the LED strip. Then push it towards the very end of this channel. Press it down so it gets stuck. Once the LED strip is in place, route the cable through the channel Put on the cover Hold it in place together with the standout Press it down and into the block Now turn it around and tighten the two screws Just be careful you don't over tighten the screws And there you have it, the LED strip is replaced. For more content like this, hit the subscribe button down below. Until next time, stay cool!